All right, let's do a acid-base problem using our sixth step, sixth step method. This is a case that has no clinical information. pH is 7.14. PCO2 is 80. And the bicarb is 20. Sodium of 140. Chloride of 100. Rounds out all the information we have. First step, clinical information. Patients in the emergency room. Nobody knows anything about the patient. So that's not helpful. Two, our pH. Our pH is less than 7.40. So we have an acidemia. Three, what is our primary? Primary acid base disorder. Let's look at our Henderson-Hasselbalch. If we have a a low pH, we must have a low bicarb or a high PCO2. In this particular case, we have all of those. We have a low pH, we have a low bicarb, and we have a low PCO2. So we can pick and choose what our primary. I'm going to say that the primary problem is a metabolic. acidosis. Why? Because I called the emergency room and the emergency room told me that the patient has a blood pressure that's very low and I suspect the patient has lactate production due to poor perfusion. So I'm going to do the patient's compensation based on what I believe the primary to be, which is a metabolic acidosis. So remember, our compensation for a metabolic acidosis is the Winters formula, which is 1.5 times the bicarb plus 8 plus or minus 2, which in this particular case equals 38 plus or minus 2. This is, of course, remember, our expected PCO2. Our expected PCO2 is in the range of 38 plus or minus 2. What is our actual PCO2? Our actual PCO2 is 80. So our expected PCO2 is 36 to 40. Our actual PCO2 is 80. So what does that tell us? That tells us we have more PCO2 than we should. What type of situation causes more PCO2 than normal? That would be CO2 retention. That would be a respiratory acidosis. So on top of what we suspect our primary to be, metabolic acidosis, we have a respiratory acidosis. So right away we have at least two acid-base problems happening at the same time. 
The next step is to look at our anion gap. In this particular case, it's our anion gap is 140 minus 100 plus 20, which equals 20. An anion gap of 20 is, by definition, a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Okay? The next step is our delta delta. And our delta delta is the change in anion gap relative to the change in bicarb. Which in this particular case is 20 less 10, which is essentially the normal anion gap, over normal bicarb, 24, less the actual bicarb, which is 20. In this particular case, our delta delta is 10 divided by 4. Remember, our normal range of our delta delta should be between 1 and 2. So if our normal range should equal 1 to 2. So for every increase in anion gap, we should have a decrease in bicarb. Approximately 1 to 1. In our case, we have 10 divided by 4. And 10 divided by 4 is greater than 2. It's 2.5. What this tells me is this tells me that the patient's bicarb of 20 is much higher than it should be. For this delta-delta ratio to be between 1 and 2, this bicarb has to be lower. So this bicarb is higher than it should be. What situation do we have where we have bicarb that's higher than normal? Bicarb that's higher than normal is a metabolic alkalosis. And a metabolic alkalosis can be caused by many things. One of those things can be vomiting. So in this particular case, we have several things. We have a metabolic alkalosis, which we proved using the delta-delta. We have a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, which we proved by calculating the anion gap. And, and, we have a respiratory acidosis, which we determined by using the compensation formula, our Winters formula here. So this particular acid-base problem resulted in a triple acid-base disorder, which was found with relative ease using our particular six-step method. So let's go back up to see what our original data was. Original data, pH is 7.14, PCO2 of 80, bicarb of 20, and an anion gap of 20. Led to a diagnosis of a respiratory acidosis, a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, and a metabolic alkalosis. One, two, three.
triple acid base disorder solved with ease, thanks to the six-step method.